what up everyone i finally got around to beating splinter cell blacklist and boy was this game a pretty much a 10 out of 10 for me and i'll tell you why in a second <clears throat> my experience with the splinter cell games has been kind of weird i uh never beat the original like the very first one on the gamecube i got the demo disc though I never beat Pandora Tomorrow. I have all the Splinter Cells. I have Pandora Tomorrow. I never beat that. I got bored halfway through Chaos Theory. Everyone says that's the best one. But um, I found the level design. And I didn't not to be good. And I found the stealth to be pretty clunky. Considering it came out on the original Xbox. So it hasn't really held up that good. Um, I haven't played Conviction. That's the only one I don't have. And Blacklist. And I had Double Agent, but that wasn't my favorite. But uh, Blacklist, hands down, is probably my favorite Splinter Cell game. All the side characters are great. Um, the only shitty thing about this game is that the original voice actor isn't voicing Sam Fisher. But after a while... He really grew on me. He has a lot of badass moments, a lot of badass lines. After every mission, if you want, on the plane jet thingy, you can call Sarah and talk to her. And it just develops his character a lot more. Um, I was never a huge, huge Sam Fisher guy. Like, when it came to his character, I always thought he was... I never thought he was generic, but there wasn't anything that stood out to me. So, other than, you know, the... Sorry, I'm stuttering here. I guess the personality has kind of shifted a bit. Other than that, there's not too big of a change, but I can see why hardcore Splinter Cell fans aren't happy about the voice actor being changed. Apparently, the dude who did the original voice was really sick and he couldn't do the voice acting for Blacklist. But as a heart, I'm not really a hardcore Splinter Cell fan, so that didn't really bug me and I got past it pretty quick. But the guy that we get here, he puts his all into it. He's not phoning it in by any means. <clears throat> he really, really did a good job. And like I said, all the side characters are great. The villain is pretty one note. You don't get to see him a lot during the game. But when he shows up, I mean, I like him. He's a pretty generic villain. But for the most part, that's what I expected. I wasn't expecting anything groundbreaking. Where this game shines, and I mean it really shines, is the gameplay, the stealth, the locations you go to. I'm pretty sure there's only... 14 levels in here but there is at least like 33 different places you get to go to in those levels and it is drop dead gorgeous the cutscenes hold up phenomenally well play especially playing on a ps3 they look beautiful all the locations have something new to offer while you're in a, a warehouse or you're in a, a military like a military base there's a they kind of sound similar, but they all look and feel completely different. I think that my favorite level might be the last level because it really puts your stealth to the test. And it is not easy. There's a lot of lasers you got to avoid. It's a big building you got to maneuver around. It feels like old classic Splinter Cell, but with that realistic feel. And the controls are so fucking smooth. The online for this game is still up. So if you want to play Spies vs. Mercenaries, you can bring a friend and do that too. This game just has a lot to offer mission-wise. Especially for the multiplayer. There's a lot of uh, different side missions you can do. In different locations you haven't been to before. So it never gets boring. It never drags. The pacing of the story is fucking phenomenal. The score and the soundtrack is just banging. And I love it. And when you get... Like, right when you start the first level, you're fucking thrown into the game. There's no bullshit tutorial. You basically gotta figure everything out for yourself. 
and yeah, it just, it's balls of the walls the whole way through, there's no slowing down, and sometimes people don't like that, but in a game like this, it was great. And the story just revolves around, you know, taking down the blacklist, and the blacklist is basically terrorist attacks, and where they're gonna hit all over the world, and you gotta stop them. Sometimes you do stop it, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you get the option to spare a guy or kill him, which I really liked. And each mission you can complete differently, or you can go in all stealth, or you can go in and just balls out blasting. And I love how they give you that choice. The hardest missions in this game for me were there's two missions in particular where you couldn't kill anyone and you can't alert anyone because they don't want you killing the military and you just have to sneak through the base. Those were hands down the hardest missions for me, but I still had a fucking blast playing them. They're satisfying to complete. All around, man, this is just a great game, especially I bought it for $10. I'm definitely going to play it again. I want to try to get the Platinum, but doing realistic difficulty for Splinter Cell is a bit too hard for me. I like a challenge, but I will not be able to do that. <laughs> Unless I dedicate like a fucking months and months of doing it, which I probably won't. Because there are so many other games to play. But man, what a great addition to the series. We haven't had a Splinter Cell game since Blacklist. But if they do make another one, I would like it to be like this. Half the missions are balls of the wall is crazy. Half of them are just great stealth missions. And even in the crazy balls of the walls missions, you can still be stealthy and still be silent. And it gives it so much replay value. Because if you don't feel like you did a good enough job, you can go back. And sometimes the placements of the enemies change to give you more of a challenge. Sometimes they stay the same. Executing people is another great um, addition they added in here. If you hit triangle, you can mark your target. And then it kind of does like a Red Dead cinematic moment where Sam kind of kills them for you. A lot of people might not like that. But I think it really helps when you have two people standing beside each other. You can just bing, bing. So satisfying, it's great. Lots of different enemy variety. This whole game is just full of variety. And I am absolutely blown away how much I enjoyed it. The night vision goggles sometimes felt useless because a lot of the missions did have a lot of light to them. Not a lot of the missions are like super, super dark. But for the most part, you get a fair use of the night vision and sonar goggles. So, yeah, that's my review. Thank you for watching. And tomorrow, my review of Cyberpunk Edge Runners will be coming out. So, if you guys have seen that, let me know how you like it because I'm enjoying it so far. Thank you for watching.